And welcome. So welcome to Yoga Flow. Um, as always, we are going to start back on our backs. You know, that's kind of my, my starting point that I like. Not to say that we couldn't start seated or standing or some other direction, but um, lying down on my back is generally where I like to start. So you guys can go ahead and head there too. Um, as already stated to those following along live with us today, if you want some music playing in the background, feel free to turn that on. Sometimes um, little touches like that can help make this home practice really stick. If you kind of set the stage, set the, set the mood, um, turn some music on, get your lighting right. Today's class is gonna highlight warrior poses. So we're gonna go through warrior one, warrior two, and warrior three. Um, we often do those poses in classes at SIPS, uh, but today we're gonna kind of put them in a sequence, put them back to back, kind of get our blood pumping a little bit, get our breath moving through our body, and um, you'll be able to take it at whatever pace feels good to you, but I think it is a nice combination of poses that can really open and align our body. So with that said, if you're resting back on your back, go ahead and close the eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Try to decide what feels best with your legs. Maybe you're gonna let them stretch long down the mat, or perhaps you're gonna to start to stay with bent knees. But just let yourself start to settle down into the floor. Maybe you add gentle movements of the head from side to side, or a little swiveling of the knees, or if your legs are long, maybe even just kind of do a little foot rock and let your toes sway from right to left. You might choose to roll the wrists or open and close the hands a little bit. Just any kind of small movements that just mean something to you. Go ahead and get cozy down into the earth. And then as we start to really settle into the ground, let's make some connection with our breath. Deepening that inhale and deepening the exhale. Perhaps as you inhale, you'll feel your belly start to rise up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, you'll feel it gently starting to fall towards your spine. Just take it easy here. This class is happening live on a Monday morning and sometimes we just need a couple extra minutes <laughs> before we get up and move because it is Monday morning. Today's practice is going to center itself, like I said, around mountain poses. Uh, mountain poses and warrior poses, rather. And I'll leave you with this opening thought. Wherever your heart leads, follow. Which would you rather live with? The mistakes of following your head or the mistakes of following your heart? Without throwing out common sense, Today, listen a little more to your heart whenever you can, and notice how satisfying your day becomes. Slowly starting to walk the feet a little closer to the hips, bending those knees, flattening the spine down into the earth. We'll take our hands and put them in place on either sides of the hips, using the inhale breath to lift into a bridge pose. Holding in that bridge, we'll take time to breathe here. Using your next natural inhale, heel, lift up off the ground. And then we just start to lower one vertebra at a time, bringing our hips all the way down into the earth. As you feel ready, right knee comes into the chest, giving a nice hug, point and flex the toes, roll around the ankle. Grabbing on to the back of the thigh, elevating foot towards the sky, pointing and flexing toes, rolling around the ankle. And then again, pulling that knee down into the chest, pointing and flexing the toes, rolling around the ankle, and then switching sides. Opposite knee comes into belly, hold it close, point and flex the toes, roll around the ankle, Switching the grip to the back of the thigh, pointing and flexing the toes, rolling around the ankle. And 
And then hugging that knee back down into the body again, pointing and flexing the toes, rolling around the ankle. Both knees coming into the belly, giving ourselves space to rock around, enjoy the earth beneath us. And then you're gonna lift both feet up, arms reach overhead, letter L, press through the toes, press through the heels. Press through the toes, press through the heels. One more time, press through the toes, press through the heels, bend the knees. Let them come down to about a 90 degree angle. So you kind of see we got a little bit of an angle here, knee to hip, and then that foot extends straight out. As you exhale, you're going to send your right leg long and bring your left hand down toward, or your right hand down towards that right hip, left arm stays overhead. And then we'll switch. So this looks kind of like bird dog, what we usually do on our knees, but it's a strong core warmer. We can do here. Now, of course, if this is too much to do with the arms, arms can stay down here by your hips and you can just rotate your legs. Obviously, the lower you bring that bottom leg when you're switching, the more you'll have to make that core work. <laughs> Had to restart my arms and I forgot what I was doing. But just take it a couple more times. So you're kind of walking through that bird dog on your back. One more time, each direction. Core is nice and warm. Perfect, hug those knees into belly, into chest, rock around. And then when you feel ready, we'll move this up to your seat. So maybe you're rocking and rolling, or maybe you just roll to your right hand side and use the earth. Once you find that seat, we're not gonna be here too long, so I'm not gonna turn sideways. I'm just gonna face the front of my mat and just kind of teeter back and forth at my hip crease. So I'm trying to keep a nice long spine as I just tip my chest forward over my lap and then pull it back up to center. Once you've done it a couple of times, switch out your legs. This is where it'll feel really funny because your hips don't wanna go the other way. Once you get used to sitting in easy pose or crisscross, one direction the other way feels a little awkward. So just a gentle hip opener. Perfect. All right, inhale, bring the chest up. Take your time to start to roll out from underneath of that seated posture and start to find your tabletop. So tabletop today is gonna to take us through all six movements of the spine because we know how important it is to keep a nice healthy spine. Not only as we age, but just in day-to-day -day life. Our spine does so much for us. So start first with a little flexion. So your belly will drop down towards the mat, chin will lift, you move into cow pose. And then give it a cat. So see what you can do here with your breath. I apologize for, I don't know if I sound as out of breath as I feel right now, but I can always tell on the mornings when I drank my smoothie too fast and I kind of been rushing around <laughs> because when I start to settle down and talk to you all, I feel a little short of breath. I think I've got a little more breakfast in my belly than I usually do when I start my morning yoga practice. All right, give it one more round, belly drop. Chin lift, tail lift. Exhale, round the back, round the spine. From here, sit back onto your heels. Walk your hands to the left edge of the mat. Sink into that right hip. You might even take your left hand and stretch all the way back towards the back of your mat, opening those arms wide. Breathe. Big stretch for that side body. Hands start to walk back up. And then let's go the other way. All right, beautiful. Sitting into that left hip as you stretch right. Right hand comes back towards your heel. Big opening.
Perfect. Hands coming back up. Walking them over to the center of the mat. Back up nice and tall. Right hand goes directly underneath your face. Inhale, breath. Open up with the left. Little spinal twist. Stay in that shape just for a moment. I've got somebody I'm going to let into the room here. Oh, no. There we go. Sorry, guys. My computer disclosed when I hit the button. Whoops. All good. All right. Come out of that twist. Start to bring the hand back to earth if you haven't already. And let's switch sides. Opposite hand lifts. Bring that hand back down to your mat when you feel ready. And just hit one more cat cow. Belly drops down on your inhale, breath, chin and tail. Exhale, round the back, round the spine. Curl toes under. Let's find your first down dog of this morning's practice. Hips are lifted, lifted nice and high. And then just walk it out. Right knee drops down towards earth, left foot steps all the way up between your hands. If you have a set of blocks handy, now might be a good time to go look for those, bring them onto your mat so that you have them close. Let that right leg lay nice and flat into the floor, sit into that front hip. And then hands lift up tall. Exhale, breath, sweep these hands down the sides of the body, and then inhale them back up. Just a couple of those. You're just warming up your shoulders, saying good morning. Next time the hands are up tall, go ahead and let them hit high prayer. Tuck them behind the head. Open up those triceps, keeping the hips nice and square to the front of your mat. Hands lift back up. Send them back down. Maybe separate the blocks off the mat. Curl the toes under. Lift that back knee just long enough to step front foot to the back and your back and downward dog. Walking this one out just like you did before. Left knee is going to drop down into the mat. Right foot steps forward. Maybe reach for those blocks again. Just get comfortable. See how you feel letting that back leg really lay down into the mat. Arms come up and then we sweep them again. Just about saying hello to the shoulders, letting everything feel awake, alive. Hands come up, high prayer, tuck them behind the head again. And when you do this, you have a tendency to really sway this back. So try to control that. Try to be aware of what's happening with that front hip. Flex through there, hands come down, separate the blocks off the mat. Enough to curl toes under the lift. And then you're back to your down dog again, walking that out. When you feel ready, these feet are gonna work their way up to your hands. It might be small steps, might be a leap. You might drop to your knees and crawl. <laughs> no judgment here. Inhale, half lift, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. Hopefully I don't. Yay! My head is not chopped off. Exhale, hands to heart. Wasn't sure after I adjusted my camera. Inhale, hands are up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale up. Now you know this rhythm. I want you to do it again at your own pace. So your inhales always happen when you reach away from your heart. Your exhales always happen when you fold towards the floor. Follow your own breath, even if your pace is different than mine. Settle into mountain pose. Now use your mountain today to really be aware of foundation. The series I talked about at the beginning that we are going to play with today is a warrior series. Warrior involves strength and focus, for sure. But just like any meaningful pose in yoga, it's also important that we find the ease. So inhale, reach those hands back up tall. 
Exhale and easy fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, easy fold. And to turn things a little different today, we're gonna to step back with left foot first. Left heel down into the ground, start to bend your right knee, lift your chest. Find your warrior one. Now, since warrior is primarily the focus today, I want you to take an extra minute here or less to really figure out what warrior one feels like to you. Ideally, your hips are turned forward. Maybe you have some space between your feet. Sometimes I really need to widen my stance. You'll hear some instructors try to tell you to get this thigh parallel with the floor and watching that knee, all kinds of alignment cues. Just see what feels good to you, all right? If this back foot can glue to the floor with your toes turned slightly out, great. Some people, nope, they still have to bring it up and it just looks more like a crescent. That's okay too, but just see if you can keep these hips square. Arms look tall, this is warrior one. Beautiful. Now giving just as much attention to warrior two. Not only does my chest open, but you'll watch my back foot slide. And now I'm in warrior two. Now my stance is really off now because I walked that wide, so I need to walk. I'm gonna move back so that you can still see my feet. I'm gonna walk my front foot so that it's even with either my instep or my big toe, and I'm ready for warrior two. Now this pose, thanks to the wonders of technology and having to watch myself teach for almost a year on a computer, I know that I naturally do this. I have one arm that lifts higher than the other. You probably do too. So see if you can pay attention to that and really let your shoulders settle. So this is the ease. Ease in your shoulders, strength in your fingers. Ease in your shoulders, strength in your fingers. Do you feel it? All right, pay that same attention to your legs. So the ease is the sink, but the strength is kind of an inward pull of your inner thighs towards the center line. Yeah, good work. Front hand flips, lean away, get a little softer here. This is peaceful warrior for a reason. So it does feel peaceful. There's no forced movements in the arm. Side angle, elbow comes forward. Beautiful, back to warrior two. And then this, see, you see my arm? <laughs> I naturally float that one arm up. All right, warrior three, now we're going to adjust everything. The hips all have to start to turn. And an easy way to move to warrior three from here, when you know that's coming, bring this back leg in just a little. So give it a little bit of a step forward. Start to turn your hips forward. And then you have two options. You can take hands down towards the floor or a set of blocks and just lift that leg nice and flat. Or when you know that's coming, your warrior two turns, follows those hands, get your feet set, then start to lift that foot up off the floor. Arms extend straight out. I don't have enough room, so I'm gonna put my hands on the wall, which to be honest, that's my favorite way to do warrior three anyway, just to have my hands on a wall or a chair. Beautiful, swinging that lifted leg back to your standing and then just fold into the floor. Step your feet all the way back, high plank. Exhale into the floor, high to low. Lift your heart up for cobra or up dog. And then flip yourself upside down, downward dog. Good. Now that was super slow motion. So what that means is we have to do it super slow motion on the other side, a little less talk and then we'll go through it a little faster the next time. Feet move up to hands. So this is a good tutorial in Warriors today. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. Because even though we do them a lot in class, very little. Inhale, up. Do we take time to really break them apart? Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway up. And exhale, fold. 
Step that right foot back, spin the right heel, warrior one, back leg is long, chest starts to come up, knee is bent, hips are square. What are you gonna do with your front foot? What are you gonna do with your back foot? Now on this side, you can actually see my back foot. Noticing the heel is pushing down into the floor. Toes are turned slightly outward. I kind of look for these two hip bones and see if I can get them forward. Pay attention to what's happening in my low back, pulling my belly in, try not to pooch my belly out or stick my belly out. I'm gonna to try to keep it nice and tame. So it helps promote that positive posture we're always looking for. And this has got ease too. We ease into that front knee. We ease those shoulders down. But the strength here is really in your feet. Got a lot of push happening into that back heel, back big toe. Perfect, start to open this up. So you have to be able to kind of move in your own feet here. Otherwise transitioning from warrior one to warrior two doesn't work so good. Arms reach out. Let them be soft, shoulders down, but then reach through those fingers. Let them be soft, reach them out through the fingertips. Ease this knee with a bend, but use that inner strength of thighs to pull this in underneath. Warrior two. See if you can check your arms. Gaze over that front hand, front hand flips, let's lean away, peaceful warrior. Again, it's called peaceful for a reason, so let it feel that way. Side angle, elbow looks for knee. Top hand comes up and over, bicep by your ear. Now you know what's next is that warrior three. So you can either try to bring your back foot in a little bit maybe, or your front foot towards you, shorten your stance, turn to angle, hip square again, maybe hands shoot out, and a capital T, or they reach down for a set of blocks. Ideally, the back toenails are facing down towards the floor. Hold. Back lifted leg swings to find your standing foot, collapse into a nice forward roll. Half lift. Fold again, feet step back, high plank. Show me how strong you are with that nice sturdy plank. Exhaling down, being brave as we lift our hearts. And then just transition yourself, taking your time, flip upside down. Downward dog. You got it. All right, small steps or a large leap feet take their time back up to hands, half lifting when you feel ready, folding, and then back to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. All three poses a little faster, half lift. Exhale, fold, left foot steps back, position the foot, lift the chest, one breath. Open, rotate the hips. Now you're in warrior two. Don't feel rushed. Flipping front hand, show me how peaceful this can be. Show me your strength, reach that elbow forward towards me. Hand goes up and overhead. Beautiful, back to your warrior two. Now you know warrior three's next, so shorten the stance if you need to. Start turning the hips, spinning on those back toes. Reaching for an object, piece of furniture, or the floor, hands out in space. Back leg swings to meet your standing leg, fold. Optional vinyasa again, half lift. Exhale, fold. Now, as we step to plank here, you can step to down dog or child's pose. Exhale, lower. Lift your heart. Flip upside down. And breathe. 
small steps or a large leap. We're back up here to our hands, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's go. Inhale up. Stay with me, friends. Exhale, fold. Halfway up. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back. Right heel touches. Inhale, reach. One breath. Exhale, spin and spiral open to your warrior two. Relaxing shoulders down. Take your time. Hips turn side. Flip. Let's show peaceful. Now let's find our strength. Back to warrior two. You know what's next. Warrior three. Shorten stance if need to. Square the hips. Hands reach for floor, object out in front, or open space. Swing your lifted leg to join your standing leg. Collapse and fold, final vinyasa, half lift. And fold, you've got it, stay with me. Feet step back, show me your strength. Put yourself in plank, lower down. Heart lifts to show bravery. Yep, you've got it. Flip those hips. Be kind to your body here. What does it need? Movement. Stillness. Beautiful. Knees drop down to earth. Hips back towards your heels. Breathe. Using your next natural inhale, come up to find your table. Knees separate, wide as hips, cat cow. One more round. Perfect. From there, knees move towards wrists. We're out to the side. Start to rotate yourself to a seat. Legs extending long out in front. You guys did so wonderful with that series. Knowing you can tuck a little blanket here underneath the rear. Good push. Exhale, fold. Let your chest move slowly towards the tops of your thighs. Maybe even softening the backs of the knees. I might slide a set of blocks behind there if your hips feel tight, if your hamstrings feel tight. And we'll use our next inhale breath to bring the chest up. Right knee moving in towards chest. Sit tall. Right foot steps over, left leg, initiating a twist towards that right knee. Giving just a little bit of love here to a twisted shape. Spine is tall, chin away from your chest. Beautiful, unwind from that. Send that leg out, let's invite the other knee in. Again, I hope you can see I always am trying to make sure those sit bones are connected. You should be too. Get your spine tall. Step that foot over and then begin to twist your chest again in the direction of that bent knee. Gazing over opposite shoulder. Keeping the chin away from your chest. Leading with your heart. Allowing it to open, thinking through possibilities, unwinding from that, feet moving up the mat, butterfly pose. If the hips feel a little irritated from all of our um, hip openers today, 
Feel free to set a set of blocks on the outer edges of those knees. I really like my black blocks because they don't seem to get as worn as quickly as some of my colored ones. But when I use them in these classes wearing black pants, I don't know that you can even see them. <laughs> they just blend right in. Belly moves forward towards your feet, perhaps. You keep that spine nice and long and just breathe. work today with those warriors. They can be kind of sneaky at you. Meaning that sometimes they become so routine, we forget to really dissect them, pay attention to what's happening in them. All right, shifting yourself to about mid mat if you aren't already there, maybe taking a block or a set of blocks with you to your back, maybe a blanket even as well. And then Shifting back to a reclined spine, knees to chest. Right knee stays hugged in, left leg goes long. Taking that right knee slowly and across the body, recline spinal twist. Easing your way back through center. Right knee still hugged into the body. And then we'll switch. Left knee in, right leg long. Gentle rocking in the body. Left knee moves over and across the body. Recline, spinal twist. Beautiful. As you feel ready, that knee comes back towards center. And we'll set that foot down on the ground, invite the other foot to join, take that same butterfly or bound angle shape. You took seated, maybe double blocks on outer sides of legs. As we rest the right hand on the heart and the left hand across your belly. Allowing your body to stay here for a few more moments, just really making connection with the breath. Allowing the belly to rise towards your ceiling on the inhale, and then just let it gently fall down towards the floor on your exhale. Don't overthink this, it's just breathing. Trying to let the breath move free, freely and fluidly through the body. Let the muscles of the face relax, your cheeks, your chin. Maybe even sway the back of your head, easy side to side or pull your Elbows out a little wider, get the shoulder blades out from underneath of you. Now you're welcome to stay here in this shape as long as you'd like. But if you're not sure if this is really the shape you want to settle in for your final Svabhasana or Shavasana, feel free to reach your hands down towards the outer edges of those legs. Begin to stand them up towards the ceiling and then the same set of blocks that you were using underneath or on the outer edges of your knees, maybe you turn those and lay them on your mat so that you can place them just beneath the backs of your knees. Now, if you don't have a set of blocks, but you brought pillows into your space, or even a couple blankets, they can work there too. But just a little bit of elevation 
with the feet. And sometimes when I get here, I like to push the back of my head into the ground, lift my back completely up off the earth. Even like to play around with my feet lifted, using those blocks underneath my legs. They even stretch arms up over top. And then just let those legs settle. Sometimes we need to give our bodies a little bit of space to move before we tell it it's time to be completely quiet. So realizing that these final moments of today's practice are set aside for everything to settle back into place. You did a lot of shifting. You did a lot of sifting. Muscle groups, breath, blood flow. Everything had a chance to kind of move around today. So we want it to get back to a state of balance. Just easing the breath slowly in and out of the body. our bodies to stay in this state of rest for a few more moments, knowing that the sound of my voice will call you back when it's time to end our practice together. Slowly starting to become aware of your breath. Allowing gentle movements to come back into the body. Maybe you've been rested on your back and you're starting to wiggle your fingers or your toes, perhaps even hugging your knees in towards your chest. Letting our heads sway easy right and left. before ultimately rolling to one side, pressing into the earth and returning back up to a seated position. Take your time to find me in that final pose, that final resting place, back up tall, 
hands palm to palm resting right at your heart. Close the eyes and embrace the ease Greatly appreciate you coming to the mat today, moving strongly through those warrior poses with me, but also remembering the importance of finding the ease in each posture and especially at the end of the practice. May you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Again, I'm so grateful for you. Namaste.